This video was made possible by my donors at GoFundMe and my patrons at Patreon. It's thanks to your support that videos like this are still possible, whether they're late or not. But more on all that at the end of the video. On the railroad, traffic needs to be directed. Trains cannot be steered by their crews. They can only go where the rails go. So throwing switches to line them into different tracks is the key to their operation. And when switches are misaligned, depending on the circumstances, they can have consequences. Sometimes minor, or sometimes even disastrous. One such incident of this happened just recently in South Carolina, which cost two people their lives. This came to be known as the KC Train Collision. Late at night on February 3rd, 2018, Amtrak train number 91, the Silver Star, left New York City down the Northeast Corridor with the final destination of Miami, Florida, with a scheduled arrival time of 6 p.m. the next day on February 4th. The train had seven cars and departed New York, being headed by Amtrak ACS 64, number 665. When the train stopped in Washington, D.C., however, the ACS had to be changed out at Washington Union Station because electrification ended in D.C. Therefore, a diesel locomotive was pulled out to pull the Silver Star south all the way to Miami. The locomotive in question was Amtrak P-42 DC number 47, and since it was an older unit built in the 90s, it had seen quite a lot of use over the years. Further down the line, a crew change took place in Hamlet, North Carolina. This would turn out to be that crew's last ride of their lives. Meanwhile, in the Columbia suburb of Case, South Carolina, CSX local F777-03 was doing switching duties at an auto rack loading facility just south of a highway bridge. The power was two CSX AC44 CW locomotives, 130 and 36, with the crew going between units depending on which direction they were going. By 1.51 a.m., the train had 34 auto racks, 130 was in the lead position, and it was lined into the Stilica Storage siding track. The crew were, was asked by the dispatcher if Everything's in the clear, is that right? Over? That's right, we locked up in Stilica. Referring to locking the switch lever, after it was supposedly set to the main line for the Amtrak to pass. The engineer and conductor sat in the cab of the 130 waiting for a ride home. The engineer estimated that they had been waiting for about 10 to 20 minutes when he asked the conductor if he realigned the switch at the junction of the silica storage track and the main. The conductor said he replied that he was sure he got it. The conductor then requested engineer to turn on the 130's headlights to verify the position of the silica storage track switch, but the light did not reach the area around the switch, which was dark. There also wasn't a target that spun when the switch was thrown, as normally you would see it if the switch was open, or in this case, the wrong way, and you wouldn't see it clearly and only see the edge of it if it was closed, such as the main, as the target would be parallel to your view and you would be looking at it edge on. In the end, they stayed in the cab, but at 2.26 a.m., the engineer got out of the cab to walk the 660 feet up the line to the switch to check if it was set properly. However, the light of the Amtrak locomotive was fast approaching. The engineer didn't have time to see if the switch was set before the arrival of the Amtrak, so he just stood on the nearby hillside under the highway bridge to watch the Amtrak pass by. However, both of the CSX crew were in for a shock when the Amtrak instead entered their siding that their train was parked in. They knew a, a collision was imminent, and the CSX conductor ran out of the cab and bailed off the locomotive, while the engineer ran up the hill he was on to avoid being hit by debris or falling rail equipment. The Amtrak crew, oblivious to what was happening when they entered the siding, noticed the CSX locomotive ahead of them and slammed on the emergency brake, knowing that these would be the last fleeting seconds they had left to live. The 
Amtrak slammed into the CSX 27 seconds after 2.27 a.m., launching the P-42 into the air and over the top of 130 and onto its left side beside the auto rack train. 130's nose and cab were completely sheared off by the Amtrak locomotive, exposing its cab interior. 36 suffered damage from the debris of both 130 and 47 flying in all directions after the crash, but wasn't too badly damaged. The two crew members, including the engineer and the Amtrak locomotive, were killed instantly and were the only fatalities in the crash. Luckily, as mentioned, the CSX conductor bailed out of the cab of the 130 only seconds before the collision. None of that means that anybody on the passenger cars were okay, however. The fourth car jackknifed almost perfectly in the middle, and all of the 87 passengers on board the Amtrak train were jolted awake by the force of the collision. The four Amtrak cabin crew were all injured, one of them seriously. Eight passengers suffered serious injuries, 62 had minor injuries, and three were not injured at all. The status of the remaining 14 passengers, however, isn't known, but we do know that they survived. When investigators investigated the crash site, it was found that the switch at the north end of silica siding was not aligned correctly. The conductor and engineer said that the switch was set to the main, however, it was found that wasn't true. The lack of a target or some other indicator on the switch was also a contributing factor, otherwise it would have reflected off the 130's headlights. Another factor was that the trains were running in dark signal territory as CSX was doing maintenance work on the signal system, meaning that they were totally not working at the time of the incident. This points to similar occurrences in the past that were directly caused by misaligned switches, such as the Graniteville train disaster when a Norfolk Southern Manifest collided head-on with a local train in a siding, causing a chlorine tanker to rupture open causing nine people to suffocate from the chlorine gas that leaked. And most similarly, a 1956 head-on collision in New Mexico between two Santa Fe Express trains, all because a th worker threw a switch the wrong way and thought he had put a correct position. His actions left 20 dead, 7 injured, and many F units destroyed. I guess history must have repeated itself 62 years later. The NTSB released their final report on the case collision in mid-2019. After the wreck was cleaned up, the line was reopened, and CSX-130 was taken to the nearest shop and scrapped. CSX-36 was taken to the shop as well, and it is currently being repaired. However, we have not seen it since the wreck. Amtrak 47 suffered severe damage to its cab after its nose was crunched after hitting the CSX locomotive. It is also presumed scrapped. Two years have gone by since this incident, and it's very hopeful that, even though how recent this accident was, we can only hope something like this is never repeated in the future. I love making videos for you guys, but often I have to spend a lot of time and sometimes even cash in order to make these videos possible. And of course, balancing these videos with real life is, well, you know how fun that can be. But if you really want to help and make more of these videos possible, please check out the links below, such as to my GoFundMe page, where any and all donations will go to keep this channel running. Be sure to also check out Patreon as well, where if you join one of two tiers, you'll get access to certain things like exclusive content, sneak peeks, uh, rail fan details, as well as other things. I'd also really like to thank Ryan's Colorado Rail Productions. He was one of the first users I got the attention of that made documentaries similar to mine, albeit crediting me for inspiration. And the same goes to any of you guys. If you ever wanted to make a video similar to mine, please, please, please ask me first, and definitely credit me for the inspiration for your idea. I know I promised that this video would be on time and it's already almost four to five days late, but you know how real life is. I even indicated it in some of my status posts, and even Ryan's Colorado made a little bit of a meme about it. But don't worry, I'll be all right. I think I'm just going to take a break until at least March or April from most of my video making until I can at least 
have the emotional strength to get back at work again. But anyways, that is all for now. I'll see you next time.